The United States is at a critical juncture in international security. Um, certainly since 2008, it has been facing increased financial constraints on its ability to operate in the international system. And there are increasing questions about whether or not security institutions that were born of the Cold War are actually appropriate to dealing with security issues in the contemporary international system. So what this session really focuses on is whether or not the United States should maintain its institutional structure, that is to say maintain institutions such as the United Nations, NATO, treaties like the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, or whether or not it should do what some scholars call retrench. Not necessarily to engage in a grand strategy of isolation where it just kind of ducks back behind its own borders, but whether or not it should withdraw from some of its alliance commitments, some of its institutional arrangements, and instead turn these issues of security over to other nation states in the international system. It's of critical importance because some scholars argue that it's because of these institutions that the international system has been relatively peaceful since the beginning of the Cold War and certainly after. Scholars argue that these institutions allow the United States to cooperate with allies abroad and to mitigate conflict with potential opponents. So these decisions are not only critical to the United States grand strategy, they're really global issues as well. I spent a lot of time talking with the Albright Fellows about how it is that institutions might or might not increase cooperation in the international system. We talked about the importance of institution as a way to communicate among states, as a way to make sure that states understand the expectations they have of each other. So for example, if you're trying to decrease your own nuclear arsenal, can you trust another state such as Russia to do the same thing? So we talked about the role of institutions in doing that. But I also tried to get them to really critically question the existence of institutions. Are institutions something the United States can continue to maintain in this financial environment? Are there ways in which, institu in which institutions not only mitigate conflict, but might actually increase it, for example, by bringing it into conflict with, with other states such as China or Russia? So both trying to get them to think about the assumptions that drive United States engagement institutions, but also to really be able to critically unpack those assumptions and see why critics might be calling for a policy of retrenchment. Well, I concluded the lecture by telling them the answer. And the fact is, the answer is there is no good answer to United States grand strategy and to solutions of international security. Ultimately, I think it's really easy for all of us to think about strategy and international relations as simply saying, this is something we want to do. What's the best means we have for achieving it? But the fact is that international relations is very rarely so clear cut. Grand strategy is very rarely simply about finding the best means to address a problem. Rather, it's about trying to find the way of dealing with international problems that are going to cause the less costs. So it means that we're dealing in a complicated world. It means that whatever strategy the United States chooses, there are going to be really serious trade-offs. And to understand them, they're not going to be able to find the perfect solution, but ultimately you're talking about finding the best, worst answer to very complicated problems. I think it's sometimes very tempting to approach group projects with the idea of we need to somehow suppress the contestation within the group in order to find the clear, coherent, and unified answer to the problem that we've been given. And what I would say is that what is wonderful about group projects is that you can work within the contestation that's going to arise. And, and for me, that's exactly what's necessary to solving, or not even to solving, but to thinking about complex global affairs. If there isn't one perfect answer, if we always need to fundamentally critique our assumptions, then working in a group allows us to see the problems in our solutions, to unpack our problematic assumptions. So what that means is if you're moving forward in a group project, don't try to suppress that dissenting opinion. Try to answer it, try to incorporate it, try to show that there is a lot of room for disagreement around a complex issue. That shouldn't keep us from moving forward, but it should allow us to have the humility and the understanding of the complexity of our world to come up with real answers to global issues.